Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I'm your host, Rambling Rogue, a.k.a. Gyres Rogue, and all of that good stuff. Shout out to the YouTube people that are listening. Shout out to the SoundCloud people that are listening. We're back on the uh, kind of old, maybe like a few episodes ago, a little setup with the camera away from Rambling Rogue, your host. You know what I'm saying? Um, we are a little bit dabbed up here. We're cooling. It's um, Monday. I think it is the Monday after first Sunday. So second Monday of May. You know what I'm saying? Summer is coming or summer here already. I don't even know. I don't even know when when exactly summer is. Wait, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. What's going on with my mic? What's going on with the mic? What's going on with the mic? Can you get me? It's like the wavelength thing getting me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Nah, but I'm going to have to, like, enhance it or something. Who knows? Yeah, man. Second Monday of May. Recording this actually a little bit late. I'm not going to lie to you, listener. I'm not going to lie to you. Ramblin' Rogue, your host, he's honest. And um, I'm, I, I, I like to just bring it forth and whatnot. So... You know, I just, you know, like anybody, I've been going through my own trials and tribulations. If you've kept up with the Dreadlock Journey vlogs on YouTube, Guys in the Jungle, shouts out. Um, Anyway, if you've kept up with that, then you would know that I actually did lose my job. And so with being unemployed and now with just focusing more on my artistry and Yes, focusing also on getting a job, but, you know, just with that and how it all shook out, you know, it's kind of affected me and whatnot, and I don't know, man, I've gotten more time to create, but it's like, with having more time, and without having something kind of just to focus my energies on, it kind of has this effect where, like, I, I just kind of have time, and I don't really know what to do with my energy, so, like, sometimes... You know, like, where I'm most effective, like, at nighttime, you know, I'll really want to be going to sleep because I'll have spent the whole entire day kind of just moping around doing whatever, and then it's just like, you know, you've already just spent so much time awake, I don't even want to be, like, awake anymore, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, my whole my whole rhythm is messed up, and it's, it's just, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, but I'm still here for y'all. Rambling Rogue is going to be a consistent thing. I did put out a video on my YouTube talking about we're going to be back with Dreadlock Journey at some point. But Rambling Rogue Show will be consistent. Um, I want I want to do some things with this podcast. I'd love to have some more great guests on this podcast. You know, especially people that I look at and that maybe people don't know about that I think, hey, have something really great to say, like the slums, like Medical Reserve. You know, these, these people that, you know, like me, are on this ground floor level of trying to get it. And we local people or whatever, but it is what it is, you know. We do it every day because we have the passion for this shit. Whether it's music, whether it's weed, whether it's money, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, art, whether it, whatever. It's So I, I love getting those conversations out of these people and um, I love bringing them to you. Any way I can. Anyway. <laughs> What's going on, man? You know what I'm saying? L- round of applause for yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Listener. Again, thank you, thank you for listening. Okay. Some buttons were accidentally hit. But we're back. And as I was saying, thank you so much for listening. But yeah, let's just move on from that. I just I just really wanted to say thank you. So we've got a little list here of stuff that we want to talk about. Um, Some new music I've been listening to. I promised Homeboy that I would actually review his shit. And um, like I said, I've been in this weird creative rut where I don't know kind of where to go creatively with my art yet so or with my content so 
I don't really want to be making videos for things like reviews or whatever like that, like just formal videos, um, just off like that. But um, what I will do is definitely review his mixtape uh, inside of this podcast, if you guys would let me, if, you, if you'll have me. And I'm talking about my guy from L. Well, he's not from L.A., but he's coming up by way of L.A., and I'm not sure exactly where he's originally from. But it's my guy, Brandon Masenko, okay? He's a rapper who, you know, he's like in his 20s or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He's like young, real young, probably like 20, 21, you know what I'm saying? And he's trying to get it popping or whatever out in L.A. with this kind of Isaiah Rashad, kind of our future-esque, kind of, you know, commons man type of rap. And, um, you know, he's put out a mixtape. It's called Dead Nigga Storage. Dead nigga storage. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Um, Spotify. Um, you know what I'm saying? SoundCloud. I think Apple Music. He got he got like a super link on his shit. Brandon. You know what I'm saying? You know how to spell Brandon. Masenko. Ma Sen Ko. Spell it out. Ma Sen Ko. Really cool dude. Um, quick little backstory on the way I met homie is that I was actually in LA myself, you know, just waiting at a bus stop, chilling with my trench coat on cooling whatever you know what i'm saying and i saw homie and while he's not the most flashy dude he's not but you know he walked with confidence and his fit was actually decent you know what i'm saying he had the uh the the, the cortezes on i think the nike and uh you know i was like hey, hey my g you know what i'm saying nice little fit he had his little, his little like like a nice little i don't even know what kind of kind of kind of pants he had on maybe he had like some kind of like I'm not even really, I like fashion, but I'm not up on all these terms like all you niggas. So it's like, like he has some like shit that looked like slacks, but it wasn't quite slacks. It was like pressed nice though. You know what I'm saying? You know, he was looking cool, man. I was like, hey man, nice fit, whatever. And then we get, you know, we get into a little conversation and we eventually just get into this conversation about how, you know, millennials are just misrepresented as these people that are, uh, you know, like antisocial and not wanting to talk and more disconnected than ever or whatever. And that's just not true. I feel like we're all still humans and we're all still the same with all of these connections that we have. It does make it seem like we're farther from other people, but I feel like every single day we have interactions with humans and with other people and we get social. And I feel like, you know, if we, if we, if we separate all the maybe like few anxious, very anxious times that we actually have, because there are those, of course, and if we just keep them as those few times, you know, and we actually look at all our interactions with people in general, for the most part, at least people, I'm like, man, you, you probably realize that we're not even all that antisocial and really we're much more, you know, willing to connect and, and, and much more curious. At least that's what I'm finding, you know, because it's like, especially people my age, man, it's like, it's like right now it's a lot, it's a, it's a huge wave of, of people wanting to be creators and it's like i think it's because so many people see the tools laid out right in front of them and then they see the successes of other people that have done it relatively young and they're like man it's and it's and it's just this time of i mean i spirit mentor said it virgil he said it's the best time to be young right now and and i totally fucking agree but um sorry rambling but that's the rambling rogue show it is jesus christ when you want to play a drop anyway yeah no it but back to back to homies mixtape brandon misenko dead nigga storage um about seven tracks let me go down this little track list here i've listened to it forwards and back probably like four good times three four good times i sat and listened to it in four different occasions and um i think i'm ready because i had a first impression of it that that alone i could have even made him you know a little review on but i listened to it again that day slept listened to it a couple more times in another sitting and honestly i'm gonna return back to this mixtape for a couple reasons there's a couple gems on there of course but especially that second track but as a whole though this mixtape wow yeah the dead nigga storage thing especially what he brings about in the intro with being blue trapped in the pool you know it kind of gives it this direction 
you know, the, the entire mixtape itself, you know, to me, while it, it does have themes that like, like come up again and again, you know, like waking up and, um, things like that. And like, I, I don't know if, I don't know if like the direction that was set with the intro, like as strong as it was with that whole long monologue and being dead and all that, it didn't really get unpacked. You know, it was just kind of brought to you. And then that's how, it, I mean, like, I don't know, like it, the, the songs themselves are all, I guess, different reactions to what a young person coming to L.A., looking at L.A. with these ambitious eyes, you know, it's, it's kind of that reaction. It's like, you know, the second track, Woke Up, I don't know if that's what it's called, Don't Kill Me, Don't Kill Me, hold on, hold on. let me pull this shit up. Dead nigga stories. Wake up. You know, with the what woke up feeling like Rihanna today. Honestly, this track is just fucking fun. It's fun. It is just energetic. It just gets a smile on my face. And honestly, it gets me, you know, just like my toes tapping or whatever. You know, Brandon is doing his thing um, with maybe like, what, three or four verses on there? And it's like. His technical rap is cool because he kind of breaks it up with these with these nice light background harmonies, you know, wake up, wake up, and you know, little parts for you to sing and stuff like that. The hook is just honestly, it's just so infectious. It's like woke up, but like I don't know, just something about it just doesn't like maybe like maybe. I mean, I'm not going to knock it on, on, on nothing, you know, but just something about the song just screams that to me, at least it needs a feature possibly like maybe, I don't know. I don't know where though, but it's a complete song where he even has a visual for it. The visual honestly is great too. wake up. That's on dead nigga storage. Brandon Misenko. Y'all, y'all go on YouTube and check that shit out. Um, I met this guy at a bus stop and he ends up coming out with a video where again, it's just, it's literally just a day in the life of a guy with females that he talks to multiple, you know, a guy that's trying to get it. Who's waking up with a smile on his face. You know what I'm saying? Trying to, you know, put a smile on his mom's face. So it's like, okay, he really broke it down real simple, real lame in terms. And, and, and he, and even in his visuals, he gets this idea across to you that he's just a simple guy, but that he's got this simple dream, but that it is so far away that it is something that you got to wake up for that. You got to be ready for. And honestly, man, like it's just an honest truth. It's a very honest truth. And, um, Again, I don't really know how this song ties into Inside Blue's head, that that intro. Like I I, I or even really any other song. You got Never Ever. A song about, you know, that that has a that has this this very three stacks ass cook. I think this is that song. Let's get a little bit of this. Let's get this hook in here. I mean, I could have went to Harvard with my big brain. Could have been fructose. Easy spills from the east side. With my brother, we play the club with like the next day. Yeah, this dude, this dude got a lot of lyrics for y'all. Yeah, man. This is, this, see, I remember what I wanted to say about this song. This song here, Never Ever, you know, this is like a good one of those songs that, that's supposed to... See, a lot of these songs, too, they, they have this energy of being ambitious, of being young, of being in this moment that we can all enjoy, that we can all really make our own. You know what I mean? Never Ever Thought I'd Be The One. You know, he keeps he keeps going back to that, and, and I really mess with that. The hook, though... Let's get the hook. 
Yeah, he's just. You know what I'm saying? My dog, you know, he. It is a lot of a lot of lyrics on this mixtape, especially on this song, especially on that last song, especially uh, a lot of lyrics on this mixtape. But Brandon's trying to break down these ideas to you. And I think at least what I found with it, he broke it down in this way that was, again, very energetic. It wasn't too preachy. It wasn't too, you know, like too woke. And it was, it was just common, you know? Now, maybe with the name drops, he could get a little bit more, like, at least me personally, I would like to see him get a little bit more, like, you know, get a little bit more underground, get a little more te- technical, you know, throw some names out that people, do, like, like that sound cool, that people don't quite know, you know? He, he name drops a, quite a lot of very, very famous and very, very, like, uh, high-end people, which, you know, it's not bad or anything, but it's just, and then he also, I mean, you know, mimics a lot of these people, too, and he's very clear and open with that as well, but it's just like, you know, I'm saying, like, with future projects, you could kind of show people how diverse and versatile you are, because it kind of sounded cool there, but it's just, it sounds cool on, like, a surface level, like, okay, yeah, you sound like Kanye, or whatever, or yeah, you sound like Three Stacks a little bit, but come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where the experimentation for him, I think, will come in, in the future. And I think that's going to be a cool thing to watch. Because I'm definitely going to be keeping up with homie. Um, he definitely seems to me like a person that could make a full-length project if he really focused in and actually had something that he wanted to say. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he really had something he wanted to say. I think he really just wanted to show how excited he is to be, like, in this time. But not only excited, but just, you know, how. Because in the intro, he kind of lets you know that, like, okay, yeah, he, he's been through ups and downs and things like that. And then there's the song about him being drunk, you know, that that's kind of the closest to a down. But a lot of these songs are very positive And honestly, like, they don't really, like, convey some of the darker edges that he kind of thought like like was because was alluding to inside of that intro you know what i'm saying the intro kind of lets you know that he, that he like 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 you know he's met his rivals and almost died and things like that and like while maybe he's just explaining that inside of these songs they're not that essence you know what i'm saying like i ain't got a song where it's like where you were like afraid to death on here like nah it, none of that energy comes off on here none you know what i'm saying but um Never ever. Then we have loose. This one's all about being drunk. It's got that reverby beat. It's got a. This one's got a very uh, kind of very uh, Damo Genesisy. You know, I feel loose. You know, you know. The, again another um. Right, you know, Brandon has this this control for 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 melody. Where his voice, you know, he can, I, in my personal opinion, he could keep a tune where he's on a hook and it don't even sound bad, man. He actually is giving me hooks that are not quite earworms, nothing I'm repeating all day, but they hold up. They don't sound bad. They don't sound out of place and they don't sound like, you know, he's trying too hard. I feel loose. Oh my, you know what I'm saying? This is a, a, a slower song. Sounds like he got drugged or something, you know what I'm saying? It's that L.A. life. I mean, you know, again, hey, people have influences, and it's great that they are delving into them. When you see an artist do that, especially when they start out it's great to watch that because you know that in in the future they're gonna you know grow into themselves and start creating their own shit i mean i could just the reason why i say that though is because i can definitely tell you that there was an odd future verse there's an odd future hook that that talks something like that like like just there's you know that has lyrics similar to that you know dancing and 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 like being loose and shit like that like it's just 
that whole essence, the vibe that he was going for, it has a reference. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't take away from it, man. It's very eerie. This song, it does sound like it was, you know, a, a, it sounds like a Tyler type beat, but it's very eerie. It's a very, you know, very slow and very dramatic type song. You know what I'm saying? My favorite cl- color, the, the the feature on here. Hold on, let's see what they did on here. Four minute track. Now he gives he gives homie advice on his verse. Hold up. Verses that hold up a song about being loose and drunk. Not the most memorable, but shows potential that, that you know, just that, because it is an idea that you want to be striving to be like something known so that when people look at you, they say, oh, it looks like this, but at least they're saying something about it. So when they look at you again, because they're going to be checking back for you, they want to be seeing where it changes. And that's that's the potential part. Now, if, if Brandon really comes off on his next and four projects, you know, still with this kind of energy, I don't know, man. I really don't know. And, you know, I, I would let him know that too. Like, I would let him know, like, bro, you really got to, you got to acquiesce. You got to, you know what I'm saying? But... And also maybe it hey it, it's also his production, you know the kind of production that you get is gonna determine what your mixtape sounds like. And I know that homie is not I don't know if he's signed but or whatever the case is I think he's signed but to like an indie label or something like that. And I don't know how that goes, but you know what I'm saying. If they get you in a room with people that maybe are not quite like the people that you wanted to mess with or whatever that could end up having having you on a beat that you didn't want to be on not saying that's the case here i'm just saying you know that could happen or, or could it i don't know but i'm, I'm just i'm just rambling rambling rogue show trap it's you know what i'm saying that's what, we, that's what we do apollonia Ooh, yeah i don't even need to play this one um i think i think you need to go for more songs like this brandon if you're listening Apollonia is just one of those songs that, uh, you know, again, dwelling inside of his influences. But when you get past that, it's just a fun song, man. Apollonia, you know what I'm saying? The beat in the background is nice, and uh, it's kind of like this weird, this weird drone that just, this that just, like, like that's just this wiry kind of, uh, you know, just 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 drone that goes on in the background and it and it, and it wraps around and it and it, 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 it it's it's a, it's a very fun song it's a very upbeat track you know he's got the feature rory knight i'm not too too up to speed on him but um as far as i can remember song totally holds up as like a very fun you know little love ballad type thing you know what i'm saying where he's trying to trying to trying to, trying to talk to this chick or whatever let's actually let's actually get a little bit of it And Frank Hoodie on the track as well. A lot of singing from uh, Brandon Misenko on this mixtape. And again, I, I think... Uh, and, and a lot of singing just inside of the same tone. Um... If, if I was going to have one complaint and I had it with that other song, you know, maybe just a feature somewhere where it breaks up where you have to sing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not that it's bad, but it's just that your voice is just so present in that same tone all over the mixtape. Just my opinion. And, and it just and it to me it just makes it a little bit monotone in that at times 
Like, I don't know. But yeah, Apollonia, good song. Good song. Good, 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 good little love song. You know what I'm saying? Good little slow song. That That's, that, that's also kind of, again, upbeat at the same time. Like, slow in the sense that it's, like, slow in, in ideas and in, in Apollonia. But it's, you know, happy. DNS Bluebird, second to last track. You know what I'm saying? Delvin and uh, Suicide with that, with that uh, uh, little tidbit there, that intro, that little re- repeated little little hook there that he also repeats towards the end of the song that he switches up. This song, um, he lays out a lot of bars about the common life and about living and what he wants and. Hey man, this track he came to really just spit straight to you, really tell you what he's about, tell you kind of just everything he, he, that that's on his mind right now, and I think it kind of just embodies, uh, I guess his message and um his sort of energy outwards and what he's bringing to the table. This song, um, dealing with shit, you know he's he's going through shit, but everybody is. And everybody's also got ambitions. So it's like, you know, you really got to choose what do you want to dwell on? What do you want to sit here and deal with? You want to go forward? You want to go backwards? You want to stay here? Um, Pink Money, this last song. A very R&B funky song out of nowhere. Um, Pink Money. This song is, okay, this song and Wake Up. Let me stop it. Our gems, okay? Pink Money deserves a video and deserves money behind it. Um, The hook, I don't know who's even on it. I believe it might be Brandon. Let me hear this hook. Pink Money. It doesn't do it justice off of my phone, but this hook, man, mixed with that beat, the verse is held up pretty much, Rory Knight, my favorite colors, pretty much that I can remember, yeah. Okay, not sure who's on the hook here. If it's Brandon, salute to you. But this is what I'm talking about here. You got this way reverbed out voice. You know what I'm saying? On that chill shit. I fuck with it. Um, the, that, that, that hook is just beautiful. That that beat is just bang. You know what I'm saying? It's just bodacious. Yeah, man. That was a good way to end out the mixtape. But was it coherent at all to Inside Blue's head? I mean, I really, I, maybe I need to listen to it again and then reference it back to every single line that you actually said on there. But as far as just clearly coming out as, as a, as a body of work that was like cohesive as like one, nah, it just didn't come like that. This felt like very much like a mixtape. And I think that it would have helped if you had just, you know, just, just, just put it out as a mixtape. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or with the intro. Because you do go into some of what you talk about inside Blue Blue's head, but you don't really quite wrap that up or really go anywhere with being a dude that was shot inside of a pool. I I, I just don't know. That's just that's just my thoughts on that, and that's my thoughts on Dead Nigga Storage. But you guys could actually go listen to Dead Nigga Storage. Um, again, I'm listening to it on SoundCloud. It is up in so many different places. This nigga got a link. Where literally you could find it even on title, so uh, yeah, go get that man. Go get go get Dead Nick Storage and shouts out to Brandon Masenko. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Brandon Masenko. But um, 
what else we got to talk about? Yeah, no more vlogs, though, just because we were focusing on the mixtape, which I can now report we have written the final song for the Linda EP, so everything is written. Um, every, That's completely done. The beats are selected, everything like that. Uh, Pretty much the order of the, the shit is pretty much done as well, and I'm just going to be putting together now the uh, uh last song. And then after that, I've already shot the cover, which I hope will actually work as a cover because, you know, I really didn't know anything about shooting or making like a cover, right? So I, I like like most things I get into, I just jump right in. And um, I guess you're supposed to shoot covers with dimensions that fit square. I, I don't and I was just brought up to speed on this, but yeah. I didn't do that, and so I had to resize it. So I'm not sure if my cover will work. We might have to reshoot it. But we're um, getting to the final stages of the mixtape being done and in your hands and in your ears. So bear with me now. Um, I'm going to try to get it to you guys. Basically, yeah, that's that's all we have for that. Um, Yeah, Linda EP is going to be coming out soon. Let's talk about... Let me just do it briefly, just briefly, or maybe not briefly, I don't know. Kanye. Um, let me just first off say this. I don't support what Kanye is saying a lot of the time fully, but I listen and I go into it because I'm looking at that person as a person whom has trailblazed. Like, that's a person who has in the past has looked at the status quo and has then changed it. People credit him with that. So when I look at myself and I think of myself, I'm not going to lie to you, listener, I always have thought of myself as a similar kind of person. So when I look at a guy like that, just off of that, I still support him. Now, when he actually go, now I'm a rational person. See, I'm not the kind of person that just blindly supports what, what a person will say. That's why I would never be good in an army. You know what I'm saying? Like I could, I support the army. I, su I love the U S army. I do. I really do. But I can never be in the army because I, I'm just a rational person. I'm just the kind of person that will not take every order. I'll only take orders that I would agree with. That's the kind of person I am. And that's insubordinate. So that wouldn't work. But you see, I believe in still being able to say, I mess with this person. I just don't mess with what they said here. I don't mess with what they said, what they said there. Because I also believe that day by day, people can be on different waves. People can be on different moods. People can be on... You know what I'm saying? Different energies. So it's like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta basically be a person that's very close minded. If you're gonna sit here and say, hey, this person said one thing, they did so much shit that I liked before, they have so much history with me and and with what i love i'm just gonna now forever just totally ignore this person totally disregard this person you know and there are some things that res reserve that sort of judgment right some things that let's say it's a person that is an advocate for something and then they go out and commit an act that's completely against what they were an advocate for let's say I don't know. Let's say a male rape activist, you know, who's spreading the awareness of male rape. And that, you know, males are rapists and whatnot is actually going to rallies and raping women. Let's say that happens, right? That guy should be totally discounted. But if a guy has an opinion about something and, it, and, and what we've known him for is to have 
this ostracizing opinion, why are we now throwing him out? Just because it doesn't, not only doesn't suit what we want, but just because it goes against us doesn't mean we should totally discount it. We should, I think what I've seen some people say this, we should just monitor him, look at it, take it in. You don't got to agree. You don't got to nod your head, but that's what I'm doing. I'm in a state of where I'm looking at Kanye and I'm just taking it in. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at it and I'm just waiting and seeing because I've also very just closely looked at his words. And I mean, he said, you know, 400 years of slavery sounded like a choice. That's ridiculous, though. It's a ridiculous statement. It's literally a child's mentality looking at slavery, no matter which way you break it down. When when you break it down with the simple, oh, are you saying that slaves had choices? Like literally? No, that that's ridiculous. And Or when you break it down with the Kanye is saying that 400 years is slavery, that we are still now slaves, that it's not over, that we are still mentally in prison, you know, and that like the slaves, you know, we are, are like them because we can, you know, we are, we are in mass. So many people of today, so many people that are in this mental slavery, we are so many and the people that are controlling us are so little. And he's saying that, Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's that, it sounds like a choice because you guys are choosing to just live in it, even though you have the numbers. But even that's ridiculous because again, you're looking at it going that slavery that you're comparing it to was not a choice at all. They were in mass, but these people were people that were completely disconnected from their families. They were completely disconnected from humanity, and a lot of times they were totally treated like. Well, yeah, well, they, I already said, disconnected from humanity. They were not even just, they would, no. So, I mean, if I can rationally think that and say that, right? Am I now going to, oh, just throw out everything Kanye is saying? No, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask, why, Kanye, did you say that? And I want to get to the bottom of that. And I don't think we've even gotten that. When we get that answer, though, if if those are evil intentions, we can have a different conversation on throwing out Kanye. But when we get to the why of why he's saying that, why, 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 I guarantee, or at least for me, it's 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 not something that I'll throw him out for. Now I don't even know the why. I don't know why he would say it. But before I get it, I'm not gonna throw him out either. And that's just where I'm at with it. Personally. I need to know why Kanye would say that. I need to know why. If it's because he's totally misinformed, ignorant, and doesn't know what he's talking about, right? And let's say tomorrow he says that, then I'm not going to throw him out. Because if what he's saying is true, he wants to be on a stream of consciousness. A stream of consciousness is... One day you're thinking one thing, tomorrow you get an influence, it changes your mind, boom, next day you're thinking another thing. And I can agree with that way of thinking, and I, th and I agree that that's how everything is. Everything is a stream. You, you, you start in one place, and you change, and you just keep going. So, yeah, that, that's where I'm at with it. That's where I'm at with it. Donald Glover, um, I put it out on Twitter, but I guess I'll, I'll do a short little thing here too. I binged all of Atlanta in one sitting, uh, season two. Uh, so basically I watched all, I mean, cause I watched season one week to week, did not enjoy that. I thought that it was just, uh, I just was too impatient. It was only 30 minute episodes. It just didn't give me enough. Nah, I, I, I wanted this season. I wanted to let it build up. So I said I was going to let it build up. So I did. And, um, man, I mean, it is a great season. It's a great season. Um, directed like movies. You know, a lot of these scenes just have these. And not even just the scenes, but the scenes with the writing. With sometimes the way that it's shot. So that you know that there's just an extra attention to detail. You know what I'm saying? And 
I can't quite get into every little scene. I'm kind of stoned right now, but that was the impression that the whole thing left on me, and I'm definitely going to be doing a rewatch. But Robin season is fucking grim. It's fucking grim. And um, <laughs> honestly, this is much more of a drama than a comedy season. The first season was so bubbly. It's Atlanta, as you see it in, uh, you know, on Instagram, as you see it on, oftentimes as you see it on the internet, oftentimes as you see it portrayed, you know, it's this place where it's like, ooh, the word, the, the phrase black is not a monolith is just so true, right? You got just all sorts of different random crazy things happening, fucking invisible cars, fucking you know, just, it, it was just, it was, it was, it was sweeter. It was much, you know, while crazier shit was happy to get Migos, you know, around and shit. But, but this season, nah, everybody's hungry. And they had a goal to, you know, with every single episode, I think, to kind of, flesh out each character not with every episode but with every character episode so every main character in this season had their own episode and um robin season it it robs all of these characters okay it robs every single one of them in their own special ways alfred i mean robin season robs alfred so, just so much in general i mean oh my goodness I mean, oh, oh, throughout the whole thing, he gets robbed so many damn times. It's ridiculous. But, uh, you know, Robin season, it, it had a goal. Everybody gets robbed. Everybody's fucking hungry. So <laughs> that that's how it happened. Honestly, I was just floored by it. I was floored by Robin season. You know, there is just so much dark underlying you know essence that's in everyday lives that can make it so that hey this normal everyday scene could just be now some crazy shit that happens in a second and that's what violence is and um you know i'm not sure why they went into this direction with this season but the message they got off was clear is that it's not all it's like especially with this rap shit and living as black males and with living as not just black males, but with people of as it, with anxiety, living with just mental illness, with problems, you know, and, and, and not just and I, when I say mental illness, I mean, everybody has mental illness. I mean, just living the human condition, you know, it's just it was just a very honest and very blunt to look at it. You know. All the all the ups must have valleys. All the all the hilltops must have valleys. So and and this season was that. You know, personally I thought that Atlanta was gonna go into the hype season. Next season. I thought that season two was gonna be because of the way the that season one ends, it's kinda like not paperboys on top, but that he's like, you know, he's really bubbling and that like, you know, he's like he's gonna be getting somewhere some shit. But it's like with season two they kind of took a step back and kind of just showed you that day-to-day -day rapper type shit. That shit where you on fucking house arrest. That shit where, nigga, you like, you got to literally be giving piss to a PO. That shit where you, you just, just, where just shit just slows up. Like, winter time, you know what I'm saying? It is just not the time for rap. It's just, it's just not. And they really showed that. It's not the time for music, really, in general. So I think next season, right, it'll be the season where they really start to hype up again. And maybe Paperboy goes on tour or something like that or, or just just some shit. But it's just like, yeah, I think I think uh, Atlanta season two. I'm not sure why they did it, but the message that they wanted to get to you, they gave it to me. It was very shocking. As a comedy, I think, I mean, if you could say it fails anywhere, it fails as a comedy, I think. I mean, there's just, I mean, like, a comedy show, is, to me, is supposed to be consistent laughs, right? And, like, it just, it's just not that. Now, there's so many laughs to be had. It's fucking hilarious. But 
I think that wasn't even the message. That wasn't even the goal with this. I think comedy was just one of the elements that needed to be there, so it was there. And it and it's not and it's not you know over it's not uh over bulging. It's not you know like uh uh it's not like too much cream on top. It's not you know it's not nothing like that. It's it's fine. It is, but um it just wasn't the focus, and it just wasn't it just wasn't what they wanted. So much honesty. I implore you guys to watch it if you're a fan of me. And, uh, yeah, because I know I enjoyed it. That's it. Anything else? Yeah, we talked about pretty much everything we wanted to talk about. Brandon Misenko, no more vlogs. I don't really know where to move forward. Pretty much that's it. Hey, man, it's the Ramblin' Rogue Show. Thank you for tuning in again. Um, I'm a little bit dabbed out. I'm going to be editing this. It's on Monday. I'm going to be editing this all day today. And then I might even drop in at my mom's store. Go do some hours over there. So, uh, you, you, 